OpenAI MCP servers are a thing now, and I'm going to show you how to connect Zapier to one, and we're going to do some cool stuff in the developer playground. Does that sound good? Let's jump in. Welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Zapier because as you already know, me and Zapier have teamed up to give you cool stuff, on artificial intelligence, and how we can integrate that. If you don't know what Zapier is, think of it like an AI orchestration platform that gives you the ability to access an entire ecosystem, whether you want to do automations, leverage their tables, features, interfaces, chatbots, canvases, agents, a ton of stuff. This allows us to use AI, throughout our business and all of our needs can be met through this little ecosystem. In today's video, I wanna see how we can connect this ecosystem to open AI and create a nice little model that has the ability to access applications outside of its little bubble. Because as you already know, when you're using ChatGBT, Claude, you're typically kind of siloed in. So the MCP server gives us the ability to access all these different apps within a chatbot interface. So basically, let's learn how we can take this 4.1 model here and send an email. But in theory, we could do a bunch of other stuff. Anything that connects with Zapier will connect to this now. To do this, make sure you just sign up for an OpenAI developer account here. We're gonna come over to this little plus button here and choose MCP server. I'm gonna go ahead and select Zapier here and we're gonna get our API key. So I'm gonna say get API key. Once we're here, all we need to do is hit create MCP server. So with that done, I'm gonna simply connect first by hitting connect, scrolling down here and simply hitting copy secret for API key. Coming over here, I'm gonna paste it and connect. So far, so good. We have some tools available to us, but we're gonna create a tool together here. I'm gonna hit add and we'll see it right there. So let's lean into the power of Zapier, which is this ability to connect to a ton of different apps. And these are gonna be what we call tools or just another way of saying it of, you got an action of Gmail, that's a tool. You got an action of Google Sheets, that'll be a tool. A tool is the capabilities that we're gonna give our model. So I'm gonna say add tool and we're gonna do Gmail. What I'm looking to do is going to be send email. There we go. So now with our MCP server here, our chatbot's gonna be able to send an email. But what we can do is actually customize this. So I'm gonna click this. And for most things, you can have AI generate the field. Scrolling down here though, I wanna change one thing. So let's say I'm coming down here and for these kind of emails, I want to be very important. These are very important emails. So for the label, I'm gonna simply do set specific field. For the value, we're gonna choose important but this could be a custom tag you create. Hit save. So now every single email I'll send through this MCP server will be tagged and ready to go. Mind you, there's a ton of other apps. I'll make sure I leave in the description down below a link to all the apps that Zapier currently integrates with in a very nice, friendly way. I'm gonna explain a little bit of this user interface, but just taking a step back of, Corbin, what are we even doing today? Like, what are we trying to solve? I wanna to go to San Francisco and I wanna plan a day trip in San Francisco. I wanna see everything about SF, plan a day trip and send it to my friend. So first thing though, because of the fact that we added a new tool or a capability, we're gonna click this and you're gonna see it pop up here. There we go. Make sure you select it and hit update. Therefore, the workflow here is very much, you add a tool here, make sure you do an update here so that the AI model can actually access it. What's cool about the developer playground is that we have way more flexibility on how we actually tailor our underlying models. So for example here, we can choose our model we want. So maybe we don't want 4.1, but we want 4.1 mini, etc. Another one here is to adjust the outputs of the AI model. So maybe we don't want text format, we want a JSON object, JSON schema, or something like temperature. Lower temperature is very consistent outputs, very consistent. Don't get creative on me, AI. And then higher temperature is go crazy. Here's a color crayon, just start drawing pictures, just basically crazier outputs that aren't as consistent as these outputs, right? So if you're looking for maybe social media captions, you'd be leaning towards a higher temperature to let it off the handle a little. For now though, typically you just go with defaults, and you'll probably be good to go unless you need something very specific. So this brings us to the next two parts here, which is the system message and the user message. And this actually shows up when you actually code with OpenAI's API as well. The system message is bottom line context of how to interact with the messages it receives from the user message. Think of the user message like anytime you use ChatGPT or Claude or Perplexity, when you put in like a prompt, that's gonna be your user message. The system message is like your social media manager interact with the prompts like a social media manager. So for example here, I'm gonna to wanna to write emails. So let me give a little bit of context of how I want these emails written. Big thing about system instructions is all about structure. Structure, structure, and structure. So what I'm gonna do here is say, you are here to help me write emails. I will send to my friend for plenty of trips to new areas. Email structure should be one, summary of the email, two, itinerary of the area, and lastly, a funny joke about the area. Oh yeah. AI can be funny. So now that I give this context though, what I can do here is simply say, I'm going to San Francisco with my friend. And because it has the system instructions, when I hit enter here, 
Watch this. This is actually pretty on point. So nice little subject, San Francisco trip plans and itinerary. It gives a summary of the email as we identified, hey, I'm super excited about our upcoming trip to San Francisco. Here's a rough itinerary with some can't miss places. So we got our itinerary for San Francisco. I get more specific with my system instructions for the actual output itself. So maybe I want a day in San Francisco, like the timing associated, like we go here at this time. Then we eat here because it's really good. And then finally, a funny joke about the area, which I'm actually curious. Why don't they serve ice cream at Alcatraz? Because the residents always break out. <laughs> what? All right, so AI's got to work on its humor. For now, though, this is solid. So we're chatting back and forth. And finally, I have come to the perfect email to send to my friend. So I'm going to say send an email to a friend here. Provide the email address. Hit enter. Let's see the magic. Clearly see this all looks good here. So I hit approve. We are sending an email through MCP. M to the C to the P. And it says the email's been sent. Let's see. So we got our subject, San Francisco trip, plans and itinerary. Then we have the underlying information. And what's really cool here that I noticed is that in the original output, it gave stuff like summary of email, which is, you know, if you're sending this to a friend, you don't really, <laughs> I mean, maybe some of y'all, but you don't really put the verbiage summary of email and they give summary. You just give the summary. This was smart enough where it just gave the summary. It was good to go. It didn't need to have the one or the two or the three. And then funny joke about San Francisco, the something about eating ice cream. Okay. So now that we have that, here's where the power comes into play. We can also add other tools. So not only can we layer the Zapier MCP, we can also add things like web search. And we can give specific time zones, areas, regions. I'm going to say add for now. So because it was talking about Alcatraz here, let's, let's go to Alcatraz. Okay, actually, can you do a web search and find me a ticket to view Alcatraz and add that to the email? Enter. So this is where the power comes into play, especially with AI models, is you're essentially giving it a toolkit. If you just use an AI model like regularly, it's typically input in, input out of text, but using something like this, we can really do multi-layers and crazy actions. So I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm just gonna hit approve and see if it's correct. Coming back to our email here, good structuring. And then supposedly we can book our tickets here. Let's book our tickets, click the link. And there we go. It actually brought us to a real booking site to see Alcatraz. It doesn't just stop there. And here's something really cool. We can take this entire workflow that I just showed you and get the code for it. This is definitely taking the playground to the next level than what it used to be two years ago. Look at this, y'all. We got a cool workflow. I like the workflow. I come up here to code and we can get the actual code here and start integrating it into our current application. If that's not super cool, I don't know what is. I mean, this just took a very complex piece of code that would have taken some time to create yourself and made it a drag and drop UI interface. And for some of y'all that are like, Corbin, I just saw your MCP key. Don't worry, I'm changing it. Don't try to take it. So that's how we connect OpenAI's models to an MCP server, which we could then use in code or just play around in the playground. So make sure to leave a like if you felt like you learned something in today's video. As you already know, those are two random videos. That is my face and that's also my face. And I'll see you in the next video.